Jesus is going up and down the country teaching and preaching the people that come to hear him. And Jesus always told simple stories to illustrate spiritual truth. He never said, he always spoke with authority, he never said, I hope this is the way. He always said, this is it. And he spoke with simplicity. Notice he spoke that so the common people understood him and listened to him gladly. And that's one of the problems I think in many churches today. We don't have speakers or preachers that are preaching with simplicity. You can say profound things as Jesus did in great simplicity. And then he spoke with urgency. He spoke as though there was an urgency about it. And then he spoke in repetition. Repetition. It's estimated that Jesus repeated himself 500 times. He spoke with authority. That was the way Jesus preached and talked to the people of his day. I think we're living in a day when people want to hear, Thus saith the Lord. And we ought to hear from the pulpits of our country, whether it's in America or Scotland, Thus saith the Lord. What does God say about the problems of our world? What does God say about your need of redemption? What does God have to say? What does the Bible have to say? And so his fame spread around. And he made his way to Jerusalem to attend a great feast. There were three feasts that all Jewish males were required to attend in Jerusalem. The Passover, the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And every time they had to go. Now where would I have gone if I wanted to find Jesus? I would have gone to the temple. But he wasn't in the temple. He had gone to a hospital at Bethesda with a pathetic crowd of broken humanity. It was the Sheep Gate. Nehemiah had built the walls of Jerusalem and made nine gates, and the Sheep Gate was where the lambs were brought to the temple for sacrifice. And the scripture says that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. God was teaching in the slaying of all those animals in the Old Testament that you read about. God was showing us that only by blood can we come into the presence of God? And we remember the story of Isaac and how Abraham took Isaac up to the mountain at God's request or God's command and said, go sacrifice your son. And Abraham was a man of faith and he was ready to give up his own son. And he took the wood and the knife and he took Isaac and laid him on that wood and he was going to burn him and then slay him with that knife. But God said, no. You have passed the test. I see that you are a righteous man, totally and completely committed to me. John the Baptist answered Isaac. Isaac asked his father while he was lying there. He said, Father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Not knowing that he himself was going to be sacrificed. And John the Baptist answered Isaac years later and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus was to be the Lamb of God there whose blood was to be shed because from the very beginning when Cain killed Abel and Cain was guilty and the reason that he was guilty was because he didn't follow God's orders. God said you can approach me only with blood. That's the reason we take communion on Sunday, the wine and the bread. We're remembering the blood that was shed for us on the cross. Abel had brought the right kind of sacrifice. He had brought a, an offering of, of an animal, of blood. It sounds terrible to have a bloody religion, but in a sense that's what we're talking about. Blood is terrible because when I see the blood, I also see my sins. I see what it took to forgive my sins in the blood that was shed. Jesus Christ was to be the supreme offering and when he went to that sheep gate in that hospital and saw all those people, he could see ahead to the fact that he himself was going to be offered as the great sacrifice and be the supreme offering. And I ask myself, how were people in the Old Testament saved before Christ? They were saved in the same way. They were saved by faith, looking forward to Christ, just as we're saved by faith, looking back to Christ. And here it was Abraham's faith. 
Abraham had faith to believe that God had a reason for him to offer his son. And it, the scripture says it was counted as righteousness for him. And the history of the world changed right there when Abraham obeyed God. And this is how far we have to go in our commitment to Christ. Abraham was ready to offer his own son because God had asked him to. And he was ready to go all the way. And that's how far you have to go. You have to say, Lord, everything I have is yours. I surrender all, not part, but all to you. Now, Jesus, he looks on the great cities of the world today. He looks on Glasgow. He looks on Hong Kong, where we held a crusade in November. He looks on New York, where we'll be holding a crusade in September. And the scripture says that Jesus weeps over the cities of the world. Jesus cried out about Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings. But you would not. I wanted to save you, Jerusalem, but you wouldn't let me. I want to save you, Glasgow, but you won't let me. I want to save you, New York. From all the drugs and all the crime and all the wickedness, I want to save you. But you won't let me. You won't come to me. I would take you and put you under my wings. I think of the homeless people, the poverty-stricken people, the people without jobs. And Jesus sees the moral, the spiritual, the psychological and physical cripples. And Jesus has compassion on them. He wants to do something to save. The Bible describes them as sick. And in the Bible, the root cause of the world's problems is called sin. Sin is a sickness. And all of us are sick because we've all sinned. We've never treated the root and the heart of the cause. We only treat the symptoms. You see, there are three little men inside of all of us. There's intellect. There's emotion. And there's will. And all three of those have to be lined up together when you come to Christ. My intellect, I look at Christ, I read the Bible, I read his story, and I say, well, I could believe that. Then I, my emotions, I go to the cross, and I see him dying in my place on the cross, and I'm moved by it, by the love that he offers me. But that's not enough. It doesn't count until you say, I will receive him. I will put my trust in him. And there are thousands of people in the church today that believe with their minds and are moved by their emotions. But their wills have not yielded. Jesus puts the same question to you. Do you want forgiveness? Do you want salvation? Do you want to know you're going to heaven? Do you want the peace that he offers you? Do you want Christ? He asks you that question tonight. Do you really want to get rid of your sins and the habits that are destroying you and leading you to destruction? The scripture says you must repent of your sins. Have you repented? It means to change, to turn around. And then you must come by faith. You can't understand it all. I don't understand this Bible, all of it. I don't understand all about Jesus. I don't understand when God says, when the scripture says that God is from everlasting to everlasting. God had no beginning. God has no end. I don't understand that. But I believe it because the scripture says it. And I believe that this book was inspired of God and it's God's message for us today. But you're not sure how you stand before God. 